Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining me tonight for another Tech Talk. Uh, and tonight we have a guest, uh, Bob Stokes, and Bob is currently he's in Hamilton at the headquarters for his business. Um, Bob is the founder and managing director of First Watch, and that's founded as a partnership between the University of Waikato and Combined Technologies, or Automation Engineering, also known as CTEC, and that's that was formed in 2019. And First Watch has developed the first cybersecurity platform to prevent attacks on the OT or operational technology network. And their solutions include a patent protected software platform and professional support services that provide protection to industrial and critical infrastructure sectors. And combining their expertise, the range of innovative partners, First Watch is committed to helping organizations manage cyber risk and providing the support and tools to succeed. And this is a major issue for many businesses, and it's something we should all be cognizant of. So, Bob, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Uh, thank you, Judith, for that introduction. So, Bob, perhaps if you could start off with a bit of background on yourself and how you got into this field of IT and cybersecurity. Well, I've, I've been in IT for, for quite some time, having nearly 20 years in the New Zealand dairy industry, um, uh, uh, just prior to Fonterra. And in 2004, um, we founded uh, CTEC, uh, primarily to, to service the dairy industry with automation and integration and, and MES um, uh, systems and uh, that grew uh, from 2004 from around 10 people at the time <clears throat> to uh, around 60, 60 odd people in the in the CTEC business. Um, in uh, around four years ago, um, we had a cyber intrusion on one of our customers in Rarotonga, and uh, it was a ransomware. It was a ransomware attack that took down the the control of the. Uh, operation of, of the load balancing between the solar farms and the diesel generators. And uh, the Rarotongan government at the time were not uh, interested in paying any ransomware money. It took us about four or five weeks to get that um, company up and running again. But what they did to me, it just clearly indicated to me that in the OT, the operational uh, uh, networks, that all of my customers and customers around the world were, were highly exposed. And the cyber attacks, which have become much more frequent, uh, are um, encroaching into more, more and more of those companies as time goes along. So the um, first watch cyber security platform, what can you tell us about how it works? Yeah, so not long after uh, that cyber intrusion on the customer in Rarotonga, I was uh, fortunate to be invited to the Waikato University under Professor Ryan Coe to have a look at a demonstration of some technology that they have de had developed to identify a cyber intrusion and shut it down at the time. And this, uh, this is very unique and patented technology. Um, I, I became very interested in that, spoke to Ryan and said, look, if we could, if we could petition that software into the OT environment, then I think that uh, I would have a, a, a solution for, for what I saw as highly exposed customers. That was the formation of First Watch, and that's how we started that business, which was a joint venture between the Waikato University and uh, CTEC at the time, uh, the company First Watch. And uh, so we've evolved from there over the last four years. So what are some of the support services and tools offered on the platform to help organisations manage risk from from cyber attack? Well, what is very unique about First Watch and the patented technology that we have is that it identifies an intrusion and shuts it down at the, at the time. So we have zero trust um, uh, architecture and technology. We are unique in the world. The patent uh, that we own, that First Watch owns, has been filed into the US, into Europe, into China, into India, and into Australia. And what it does and what it's uh, very unique and how it operates, it, it identifies and shuts down at the point of any intrusion. No other technology in the world at the moment has that capability. Well, this is a world leader and um, clearly you're, you're working very well with the University of Waikato. I was there just a week ago uh, meeting some of their innovation people. Um, so 
you're obviously in a great place when it comes to working with the university, but also your many years of experience. So, you know, well done, Bob. So, you know, with the what is the technology behind the ability to actually control unauthorized actions and applications from being installed onto organizations' OT or operational technology networks? So the, the software has uh, three unique um, uh, software uh, modules to its um, to its suite. Uh, um, one of the modules is installed on the uh, on the HMI, the SCADA platforms, or the if you like the IT um, uh, work, workstations or laptops. Uh, the there is another little module that's installed and in near, near the PLCs, which is the heart of any manufacturing operation. And then there's a first watch controller, which um, which talks to both of those and um, can recognize and prevent any uh, unauthorized um, upload or any any intrusion or any uh, unusual activity at the time and shut it down and alert and alarm um, either our operations center here or the, the 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 site person that hey you need to go and have a look at um at this activity well is the software user you know is, is it user friendly well, it's uh, it's it's very user friendly in so far as it um, it acts uh, largely on its own. There is very little uh, hands-on, uh, if you like, day-to-day uh, -day, um, requirement for any operators or any um, IT specialist. It, um, it it sits in the background. It will shut down and it will alert of, it, of any activity, and then um, either somebody in the operations center or a, or a site-based per, site based person will go and have a look and see what has gone on. So it is very user-friendly. And so are you able to name um, some of the innovative partners that you're working with? Well, some of our partners are very um, are very conscious about being named for fear of being a targeted attack. But yes. um, I, what I will say is that we've got some manufacturing sites locally. Uh, we've got some water wastewater plants um, uh, that are operating with our technology and we've also got some dairy plants yes i think we can all imagine now um and they sound like excellent clients how many clients roughly are using this platform is that something you can share with us yes we've got a we've got around eight uh, locally here and i've got a reseller in australia we've got seven um, um uh, seven customers on the on the on the book at the moment. One of which, interestingly enough, is um, is Sydney Airport. Um, you can imagine uh, the disruption that could occur if um, cyber intruders uh, shut down baggage handling systems. So we're working in that space. Uh, we've got a couple of plants um, and projects in India. Um, one in the power sector. There, we currently uh, have a project underway uh, with the uh, Singapore uh, government. On, on power delivery there and currently talking to people in the US where I'll be chasing water, wastewater and other manufacturing operations. So it's a startup company, uh, Judith, and um, it's taken us a little bit of time to get to where we've got to. Uh, our technology is robust and, and hardened by now and we're ready, to, uh, we're ready to go out to the world. Well, that's great. And I think one of the things, Bob, is that you are really global already. And that's um, astonishingly good. You've got an office in, in Auckland, obviously, which is um, obviously within New Zealand. Uh, but you also have one now in India. And of course, this is the sort of technology that just about every business, um, particularly those in the manufacturing areas, must be in, in infrastructure, must be uh, very aware of the threats that, that are posed by these bad actors, as we call them. Yes, and we're, we're constantly looking at, at, um, at what our <coughs> uh, possible competitors are, uh, are saying and, um, and where they're working. And we're, we're always analysing the capability of what we have and, uh, and what the rest of the world offers. And we are still very unique. We're still very passionate about what we've got. We're ahead of the game. We just uh, and we're ready to uh, move into these international markets. Uh, we have a very uh, strong uh, technical advisory board on the First Watch team. There, there are people out of uh, out of Snyder, out of the USA. We've got people out of um, uh, that started up Cert New Zealand and uh, um, some time ago that uh, that are on the board. Professor Ryan Coe still maintains active interest in the board. 
And uh, so, you know, we've got we've got good intel coming through to us all the time to, to keep us ahead of the game. Right. And what are some of the common cyber threats that you are seeing in your <clears throat> work? Well, it's interesting. Uh, ransomware is still a big, um, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of activity in that. And just uh, just in the last few days, I had a company, a local company, a large company in Hamilton here came to see me. They had been taken down with ransomware attack. Um, they obviously were feeling um, very uneasy. And um, let's say these companies are a bit embarrassed about it too, but there's nothing to be embarrassed about unless you are prepared and have invested money for cyber protection and um, have had assessments done, then you are likely to be a target. There are, there are low hanging fruit and there are more complex companies that have been targeted. Both, both ransomware for for those that uh, that uh, where the actors have been disrupted, and for companies that have um, records, particularly medical, like the like the uh, uh, district health boards, you know that data is very very uh, sought after on the on the um, on the dark side. Yes, it's very interesting, isn't it? I I often feel very sorry for people who have been targeted like this because it must be one of the few crimes where the initial response of people um, <clears throat> sometimes in the media, I should say, uh, is to blame the victims rather than to um, blame the perpetrators. But I I fully understand just this, how serious it is. So do you, how, looking at that, how do you think New Zealand sits in comparison to other countries in the cybersecurity space? Judith, I've, I've got to be quite honest in terms of what I see and, and what I feel right now. In Australia, for instance, um, where we um, are quite active at the moment, the, the government has mandated uh, for critical infrastructure that companies have to have protection in place. And uh, to my knowledge, that's not yet in New Zealand and needs to be. Uh, we, we've got critical infrastructure that, that uh, before long will become a target and uh, will be taken down. So um, I think New Zealand is actually behind um, the, the, the game plan here and probably need to make some legislative changes uh, to uh, to ensure that we we catch up because we are behind. Well, I think it's very much about um, making sure that we are aware of and therefore take action. But Bob, I remember in 2015, I was, um, I think it was 2015, yes, I, I was off in uh, New York and met with one of the big worldwide insurers and ask them what was their major issue, thinking it might be climate change or something else. And they said cyber security. I came back, wrote an article about it, and it, it just basically what we heard was crickets. Nobody was interested in cyber security because we New Zealanders think everyone just loves us and we're not going to be the target of anything. But Bob, as you know, ransomware, um, those sorts of attacks, they can go after anybody for anything. So um, really, really, really important issue. So do you have any advice for those listening uh, in today about how we might better lower the risk of cyber breaches to both you know, those organizations, that critical infrastructure, and even everybody's personal devices? Yes, well, personal devices like uh, laptops and people, uh, you know, working from home, they they are a risk to the company, and um, a lot of these intrusions uh, can come from within. Uh, so the perimeter of, of a company may be hardened up from a cyber uh, security point of view, but um, intrusions can come from within. Just uh, you know, merely opening up an email that. Um, <clears throat> And we're all we're all busy. We're all in a hurry. Uh, sometimes we may not notice uh, quickly what we're opening up. And as soon as you've opened it, um, it could well be that uh, you know some malware has come into the into your, into your company. So, look, any company just needs to um, at the CEO level and the directors level, they need to ensure that money is spent to engage with a a qualified company uh, that can give them protection give them uh, security, give them assurance from a from an insurance point of view in terms of material damage and uh, and uh, and loss of data. They just need to spend some money and um, and have it in their budget, have it planned and um, and get underway with uh, um, with assessments and um, 
and engage with a qualified company. And so do you think around business, you know, board tables, this is one of the big issues that my friends who are directors and companies tell me that they're, they're really having to grapple with that and health and safety and as well as the financials. Um, but this is one which can hit anybody, any time. You don't have to be around the board table to be concerned about it. And, and Bob, just really want to thank you for your time tonight and, and for sharing with us um, this great story about the work that you've done over the years and the work that you're doing with First Watch. Um, it's it's great work and it's and it's global and it has massive potential globally. So well done you. Thank you, Judith, and uh, thank you for your time. And um, and it'd be a pleasure to um, to hear from anybody that uh, uh, that would like to make contact with us. Right. Well, look, I tell you what, Bob. Um, I will pop the uh, website, your website, in the comments below, so that if anyone wishes to, they can easily contact you. And thanks very much for your time and sharing with us your knowledge um, on this incredibly important area for us all. Thank you, Judith. Have a good Thank evening. You. Good night.